Thank you, Lord. Thank you. What a blessing it is to be in the house today. Amen. Oh, God is so good to us on today. So good. Oh, it brings a joy to my heart to be in the house of the Lord. Oh, saints. Saints, the Lord is with us today. The Lord is with us. Welcome. Welcome to the service. Welcome. Those that are at home, welcome. YouTube family, welcome. Facebook family, welcome. Oh Lord, how you hit sense. Heavenly Father, we thank you, oh God. We thank you for the day, oh Lord. We thank you. Oh Lord, we thank you for your new power, oh God. We thank you. We thank you for your wisdom, oh God. To give us to know how to do and what to do. Oh Lord, we pray these things, oh God, that you remain with us, Lord. Oh Lord, take care of the feeble minded, oh God. Touch them, Lord. Touch their minds, oh God, so that they may not do things that the, the enemy would have them to do. We bind the enemy on today, oh God. We bind him on today, oh God. Oh, oh Lord, we thank Lord, we thank you for your hand of protection, oh God. We thank you for your hand of protection today and every day, oh God. Saints, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, Lord, the enemy comes to destroy us, oh God, to keep us from you, Lord. But, Lord, give us the strength to stand, stand away from you, oh God. Not to turn to his way, O Lord, but to turn to you, O God. Oh, give us a, the power, O Lord, to stand. To stand, O Lord. O Lord, give us a will to read your word and study your, study your word, O God, so that our faith may be stronger, O God. So that we will know that you are here, O God. Oh, touch us on today, O Lord. Touch us on today. In these things we pray. Amen. I'll be reading the, the Old Testament, Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 29th to the 31st verse. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that he have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall, shall faint, and the weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. I'll be coming to you this morning with the New Testament. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through the faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures are given by inspiration of God and, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I read to you 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verses 15 through 16. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Good morning, community. Uh, it's an honor to be here to serve the Lord this morning. Today I will be reading the Statement of Faith, and uh, we're just going to get going. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and only infallible written Word of God. We believe that there is only one God, eternally existent in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the Church of God which is in Christ at his return. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body in answer to believing in prayer. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit 
according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers who ask for it. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in the present world. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Unity. The Unity musicians would like to do a selection this morning. The selection we'll be doing is called Thank You, Lord.
job. It's a statement that gets thrown around my house a lot. Actually, I coined the phrase, the First Lady Rogers. Um, and her statement, she likes to say is, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. And it's such a simple yet powerful statement that goes, Lord, I thank you. And you see, God owes us nothing, yet he does so much. Even though we can't always see what God is doing for us behind the scenes, he does so much. And for that, we say, God, I thank you. Lord, we thank you. We serve a God so generous that he's allowed for us to have air in our lungs at this very moment. He's allowed for us to have life in our body at this very moment. So we say, God, we thank you. Yet God is keeping this mint at this moment, in the future, in the past, at moments that we don't even know are going to happen yet. So we say, God, we thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you let out the Lord, I thank you, for all the people that God has kept in his mint yet another year. Because God didn't have to do that. God didn't have to allow for us to even give the thanks to him. So we say, Lord, we say, God, we thank you, Lord God. Lord God, on behalf of the unity and the unity family, we want to say, God, we thank you for allowing the people and our friends and our community to have another year of life, Lord God. Amen. Amen. I get joy when I think about what God has done for me. I get joy. I thank God for waking me up each and every morning. I get joy. Yeah.
age. And uh, he would, every once in a while, when the spirit got on him, he began to shout on one leg. And he would think about his life. And he would simply say, Lord, I thank you. Hey, 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 hey. You heard the young man said how he thanks God. How he celebrates us that we're still here together. You heard sister. Have the great sing the song I get joy when I think about. It. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Lord, when I begin to think about all that you've done for me, all the doors that you've opened. Oh, you got to make it personal. Don't worry about my life. What about your life? Think about what God has done for you. Thank you. I thank God that you trust God. I thank God that you understand that it's God that gives, not man. I simply just want to thank you for obeying God. Unity, thank you for your support. Unity, thank you for your tithes. Unity, thank you for your offering. To our family that is in the community that has reached out, we are praying for you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you to our YouTube family. You're awesome. Thank you to our Facebook family. We are still praying for you. We're praying that soon this will pass over. We begin to shout together, begin to sing together, begin to engage God together. And we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for what you have sacrificed on to God. I want to quickly say, I want to quickly say, if you are not sure, if you are not sure, if we have your address and you belong to the men's department, I want you to get a hold of Deacon Graves and make sure he has your address. If you belong to the women's department, I want you to make sure you reach out uh, to First Lady Rogers and make sure uh, that they have your address. And then in the community, in the community, uh, you heard in Sunday school that if you do not have a book and if you're in part of the Bible band on our Wednesday Bible teaching, you do not have a book, you can go to unitycogic.org, U-N-I-T-Y-C-O-G-I-C.org, and if you hit that tab to become a part of Unity, there's some information that if you fill out, we'll try to get in connection with you and contact you, and maybe we can get you those items that are missing from your study. Because we believe, we believe that unity is a force within the community. And we thank God, we thank God. We thank God for your sacrifice, just right where you're at, right where you're at. Heavenly Father, we thank you for them right now. Lord, you know their sacrifice. You know that every time when they sow a seed unto you, the anguish, the concern. But Lord, there are those that celebrate because they understand that unto you, that you can do anything but fail. Unto you, they have put the principle into place. Unto you, you can take the little means and begin to open up doors. You can go into the Hospital, You can calm the mind, Lord. You can calm the nerves. Lord, I pray that you show your love on blessings, not only those who are able to give, but those who have a desire but just do not have it. You are God that reigns on everyone. Lord, I pray that this is their due season. I pray I want them to get it in their spirit, but I pray that they understand that they are lenders and not borrowers. I pray, Lord, that they would have an understanding and a peace. Lord, I ask you to hide them within your pavilion. I ask you to give them favor. I ask you to lead them as they go out and guide them, Lord, and keep them safe from any harm. Lord, thus we pray in thy son Jesus' name, amen and amen. I continuously challenge you to trust and lean on God. Trust 
and lean on God. I'm going to ask the musicians if they would come with another selection at this time. Good morning, Unity. The musicians would like to perform another selection, and this selection is called He's Able.
has no residence because you don't understand who he is. God is able. Yes. God yes. is able. Sometimes when it feels overwhelming, I don't know if I'm quite able. But God is able. I've learned that if I don't give up on God, he won't give up on me. I'm glad we have this time together, this moment. And prior to us, as we begin our word, prior to us, we will, after scripture, pray. But this time that we have together, we will be in the book of Mark. Book of Mark in the New Testament. We will just go to the first chapter. Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 26. I will read the King James and then right behind the NIV or the International Version. The King James, Mark chapter 1, verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, and straight away on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. Verse 22. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes, verse 23, and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth, are thy come to destroy us, I know thee who art, the Holy One of God, verse 25, Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Verse 26. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Mark chapter 1, verse 21, NIV. The International Version of King James read. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to preach, began to teach. Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. Verse 22, the people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Verse 23, just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out. Verse 24, what do you want with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Verse 25, be quiet, said Jesus sternly, come out of him. Then verse 26, the evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. Why are you yet standing? Why are you yet standing? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for your word of God. Lord, we pray that your word now goes to meet each and every one. All of us is at a different place in this moment of our lives. And all of us need just something just a little bit different. So Lord, to those who in their minds really want to do better but are not sure, I pray that the word of God just stop. And to those who had a desire but kept going back and forth, let thy word chest stop. Lord, to those who are simply trying to go on another day, then I pray that your word encourage them right now. It strengthens them, gives them an opportunity to know that you're still God and you're still in place and your hand is still protecting 
There are those who have come into the fold who wants to do more and needs to do more, but not sure how to do it. They are trapped and troubled. And does anybody understand me? And how do I perform? And how do I speak? And how do I witness? Then I pray, Lord, right now that this word, your word, will inspire them. Because, Lord, we are to go out into the hedges to all nations. And so, Lord, I pray right now, each, every one of us, each individual, we were custom and made just for this moment. So let us fulfill our purpose, Lord. Give us the strength and the courage. We will give you all honor and glory. In thy son Jesus' name, amen and amen. This time that we have together, we are coming from Mark, Mark Chapter 1, we have read verses 21 through 26. And the title that we would like to share with you is simply Authority Has Power. Authority Has Power. Authority Has Power. Certain authority has the power to influence your life. Certain authority has the power to change your life forever. See, authority can influence some of the major decisions that you either have to make or you will make within your lifespan. But authority can also mistreat you. Authority can also mislead you. Authority can and has the ability sometimes to simply lie to you. Authority, authority. Authority can make you believe that your actions in certain situations is right, notable, and even justified. But oh, after you have participated in that certain situations or have you participated in certain things that authority have misled you, it soon begin to register that your actions might not have been honorable when you open your eyes and realize that you may be spending the rest of your life in jail. Authority can mislead you. Certain authority can cause damage to you and to your family. The devil, the devil will take you farther than you wanted to go. And he'll keep you longer than you wanted to stay. See, authority can also, authority can also empower you. Authority can also strengthen you. Authority if you allow it, authority can cleanse you. Authority, if you have a made up heart, authority can renew your mind. Authority, if you open up, authority can heal your heart. See, authority can also, no matter what you have went through, no matter how people look at you and how they have already spoken out against you, authority can save you. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. And once you have given your heart and once you come humbly before the grand throne of grace, authority can fill you with the Holy Ghost. Yes. See, the power of God's authority can change others and also yourself. Authority God's authority can change others and also God's authority, if you allow it, can change you as well. Our text, Mark chapter 1, verse 21, our text opened with Jesus and four disciples. Jesus has just called these four disciples to follow him. 
And on the Sabbath they went into the synagogue. These four disciples read just a little bit further and cross-reference. A couple of them had heard about Jesus through John the Baptist. So when he walked through and saw them working, when he walked through and saw them working, oh, you'll get it in a minute. When he walked through and saw them working, he reached out and said, follow me. He says, I'll make you fisher of men. And the Bible says he went a little further and saw some other ones that were working. He says, follow me. Our text, this part of the scripture says that it was Jesus and the four disciples. And it was the Sabbath. And that particular religion, they went to the synagogue. First scripture of our text simply states that Jesus and his four disciples went to the local church. See, in that community, they had a synagogue and they would get together. That's where they assembled. Our text states that when Jesus got into that local church, within that local synagogue, he began to teach. Jesus entered into that particular synagogue, that particular local church. Jesus began to teach them truth. Jesus began to teach with the power. Jesus taught with an authority and an experience. He taught the consequences to their actions. It was in that local synagogue, that local church, that Jesus began to fulfill and speak the scriptures. Yes. Bible says that the people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority. Yeah. He says that, the Bible says the people, the hearers, were amazed by his authority. We often say, after we get done reading our Old Testament and our New Testament, Sometimes we say that God bless the hearers and doers of the word. The people were the hearers and the hearers were amazed. The hearers were astounded. The hearers of the word were overwhelmed. The hearers were struck out of their senses. How can this be? He speaks so clear. He touches the heart. We're not distant from the word. He brings the word right to us. Yeah, yeah. That everyone has an understanding of what he is speaking. What is interesting within this particular verse, verse 22 when it says the people, the hearers, says that they were amazed. It's interesting that those same people those same hearers, they visit that particular synagogue for years. They routinely on the Sabbath went into that particular synagogue. They understood the routine. They understood what would happen next. But on that particular Sabbath, on that particular Sabbath, they heard the authority. They heard Jesus. They heard Jesus speak to their hearts. See, for years, they heard the rabbis and the teachers quote from previous rabbis. Mm -hmm. For years, they heard the rabbis and the teachers quote from the tradition. Yeah. For years, they heard the rabbis and the teachers read about the law and give them expounding on the law. But on that particular Sabbath, Jesus arrived at that particular synagogue. Jesus arrived at that local church. Jesus taught them power and truth. Jesus taught them the authority through experience 
On that particular Sabbath, Jesus taught them consequences to their actions. I need to challenge you today because some do not realize that Jesus has given you authority. Some do not realize that Jesus has given us, you and me, this power. Some of you have put away what Jesus has asked you to do. You don't realize that when Jesus saved you and when he brought us through all of our different life experience, he was simply preparing you. He was preparing you that you would amaze people with your witness. Jesus had prepared you. God, why did you let me be raised in certain environments? God, why did I have to go through certain situations? God, why did I get entangled with certain things? He was preparing you to teach. Jesus gave us all a commission in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. Challenged us to go through all the nation and speak to them. Our lifespans, our time on this earth. We often think about if Jesus is coming back next week. We say, is Jesus coming back next year? We say, we see the times and things might be happening. So Jesus must be coming back soon. I tell you now, don't worry about when Jesus is coming. Worry about your lifespan on this earth. How much time do you have left? Very heavy heart. We have lost loved ones on last year of 2020. And it was not their expectation to leave. So your time, your life span. How are you using your time? See, I had to realize, I had to understand that I no longer had time to squabble. No longer had time to point out what is not being done. No longer had time to worry about some of the inner little conflicts that we might have. I am focusing on what needs to be done. See, I'm, I'm focusing because suicides must be prevented. I'm focusing because depression has to be altered. I'm focusing because broken homes have to be united. I'm focusing because abandonment needs to be reassured. You don't have time for any of that squabbling. Don't you know the battle is not supposed to be inside of your community, not inside of your church. The battle is out there where the war must be fought. Jesus said in Matthew, go to all nations. Right now, there is someone struggling because they're realizing their situation but they need you. Right now, someone is wondering if tomorrow would be a better day and they don't know that they need your particular testimony. Right now, someone is hoping that someone can tell them that it's going to be okay. You don't realize God has already commissioned you to do the work. If God has delivered you from something, hey, and you have been empowered to teach. This is not an age thing. It doesn't matter how old you are. Share your experience. This experience that you teach. Jesus has given you the authority. You don't have to hold your head down. We all have come up short of his glory. Tell him. Tell him you're not proud of some of the things that have happened in your life. You might have begun smoking weed. You can tell them because I fit in with the wrong friends. I begin to do things that I wasn't proud of. You can tell them that you started just a little bit and before you know it, you continue when you're having rough and bad days. And before you know it, it was all you thought about. Tell them that soon your life was not moving in the direction you was hoping it would go. Opportunities were shrinking because you were participating 
and you found yourself in a perpetual cycle of life. Yeah. Tell them right that you're there to teach. Yeah. But oh, tell them that one day you allowed God into your heart yeah. and you gave God all of your anxiety and all of your worry. And you pray, God, would you give us the strength? God, will you give me the strength? God, will you give me the confidence that I can make it? Yes, yes. Tell them you no longer have to depend on that weed to make you happy. Yes. Tell them the truth that you actually feel better yes. than you did before. You're able to focus more. Tell them that you really, really Life is a little bit better and is moving in a different direction. Don't just tell them that God can. Tell them what God can do. Yeah, yeah. Teach with an spirit of authority. You ain't got to be afraid. Tell them, yes, I am separated or I've had a divorce. Simply because we cannot hear each other. But God can restore your heart. Tell them, tell them the truth. Yes, we might not be back together, but God was able to put me back together. Speak the truth with authority. Somebody is waiting on you. Tell them, yes, I've been depressed. Yes, the devil almost persuaded me to take my life. But thanks, thanks for God's authority. I am here today. And I'm able to tell you that there is a better way. Tell them what God has done for you. Teach with the experience, authority that you have in life. You don't have to be ashamed of it. The devil used those things. God has empowered you. Tell them, yes, I had a child that was out of wedlock. And people talked about me. They even tried to shame me. But God's authority kept my mind. God's authority gave me a will to live. I am here today so I can tell you there is a better way. Tell them what God has done for you. You don't have to be ashamed. We have all come up short. Tell them, yes, I've been incarcerated. Tell them the poor decisions that I made. Tell them the people that I allowed to influence my life. Tell them I did not want to control my temper. Tell them I believe I would not get caught, but thanks be to God's authority. Yeah. Hey, I'm here today so I can tell you there's a better way. Yeah. You ain't got to be embarrassed. Everybody that looks like they're prosperous ain't Got too much in their pocket. Tell them the truth. Yeah. Tell them, yes, I've been homeless. I allow things in my life to get out of hand. And before I knew it, I had nothing. But I'm here today. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I am here today so I can tell you there is a better way. Yeah. Tell them what God has done for you. Don't just tell them that God can Tell them what God can do. Teach with the authority. Teach with the experience. Teach with the compassion that God has given you. Jesus was there in the synagogue on that particular day. He was there in that local church. Jesus was opening up the minds of the hearers. Jesus was reaching the hearts of the hearers. Jesus was teaching with so much authority. Jesus was teaching with so much power that a man within the synagogue had to cry out. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Bible says in Mark chapter 1 verse 23, just then a man in the synagogue. Hey, man in the synagogue was possessed by an evil spirit, cried out. What is almost uh, important note to take place is that the evil spirit 
and the man. I want you to get this. The evil spirit and the man came to the synagogue on the Sabbath. He was already in the local church. He was already in the Sabbath synagogue. See, I was unable to find out how many times the man and the evil spirit came to the synagogue. The Bible does not say that prior to the outburst, those within the synagogue begin to point out the man. So that I have to assume that the man and the evil spirit appear to have visited the synagogue before. I have to take the assumption because the Bible does not say that they said, look at the stranger. I have to have the assumption because the Bible does not tell me that they looked and said, who is this foreigner coming in to the local church? The Bible only says that the man cried out with the evil spirit. Don't you know that the teaching that you have been given, you can touch a heart that the devil can no longer hold on to the soul. See, they begin to hear the word of God. Jesus talked with such authority that it began to touch them that the man in the evil spirit cannot take it anymore, so he cried out. The man in the evil spirit didn't feel comfortable no more in the synagogue. The man in the evil spirit didn't no longer feel that he was a part of that local church. Why? Because the authority was in the church. That synagogue, that local church that was changing. Jesus was changing the atmosphere. Don't you know that if you begin to tell the truth, don't you know that if you reach out and help someone else, don't you know that don't have to be all stuck up? You can break yourself down to a level that, let me tell you, I know what you're going through. You can change the atmosphere. The man in the evil spirit got up and went to church that day. The man in the evil spirit went through their regular routine. The man in the evil spirit said, it's the Sabbath. Let's go see what they're doing. Let's make sure no one's being delivered. Let's make sure no one is growing. Let's make sure no one is caring. Let's make sure they're still squabbling over simple things. The man in the evil spirit went to church. Hey, thank you, Jesus. They were not bothered. They were not concerned until Jesus, how Jesus began to teach. Here it is that the man and the evil spirit, they begin to look around and they saw people being delivered. They saw eyes being opened. They saw hearts being mended. They saw those that were poor in spirit was feeling strengthened. And it got too close. To home. The enemy man and the evil spirit begin to cry out. It is time for us to go to work. I believe there's evil spirits that are too comfortable within our community. I believe there are evil spirits too comfortable within our homes. I believe there are evil spirits that are too comfortable within our churches. We must go to work. We must teach them with the experience authority that God has given us. The man and the evil spirit begin to plead, lead us alone. Begin to yell out, what do you want with us? Would you simply let us be? Don't begin to tell me that God can make a difference. Don't begin to tell me that God loves me. Don't begin to tell me that you accept me the way that I am. Man and the evil spirit begin to acquire. Hey, have you come to destroy us? Even the evil spirit wanted to hold on. But oh, when you begin to speak with authority. Oh, when you begin to speak with truth. Oh, when you reach out from your heart. Hey, thank you, Jesus. When you begin to meet them right where they at. When you begin to see them in their distress. When you can call someone up who's on the verge of being depressed. When you have someone that feels so isolated and ashamed of their actions. When we 
ourselves. Hey, thank you, Jesus, can make a difference in someone's life. The man and the evil spirit, the Bible says they say that I know who you are. The man and the evil spirit acknowledge I know who you are. See, Jesus didn't go to that particular synagogue every Sabbath. Jesus did not visit them uh, every Sabbath. It was a local synagogue. But even though they did not really recognize Jesus, they recognized the authority that was in him. And so the people were amazed at what was taking place. But the devil already knew. Hey, 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 notice it did not say that the people begin to expand. I know who you are. But oh, the evil spirit said, I know who you are. Said you are the Holy One of God. You are the lily within the valley. Hey, thank you, Jesus. You are the bright and morning star. Hey, thank you, Jesus. I am concerned, maybe just a little baffled. I wonder if the evil spirit would recognize you. Hey, hey, I wonder would that evil spirit begin to recognize your authority? Would the evil spirit seem a little similarity? Huh? Would the evil spirit be intimidated by your prayer life? Would the evil spirit be intimidated at how you trust and hold on to God? Would it be a little bit intimidated on how your faith allows God to use you? It is in this part of our text, the Bible states that Jesus rebuked the spirit. Our text says that Jesus sternly stated, be quiet. It says it told him to hold thy peace. Pastor Rogers adds this in it. I felt the spirit was talking that Jesus simply said, shut up. Come on out of him. And see, when the unclean spirit, 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 hey, hey, the unclean spirit had torn the man aside and cried with a loud voice, says in the King James Version that the evil spirit shook the man violently. Hey, came out with a shriek. Hey, don't you know there are things in your life that you might not want to let go? Hey, hey, there are things in your life that you will make you feel that if you let it go, it would be painful. There are things in your life that are trying to hold on to your soul. See, when the unclean spirit had torn from the man and it cried out with a loud voice, uh, even though the voice was cried, the Bible says it came out. So I want you to get this. I believe if you cry out to God with a loud voice, I believe he will set you free. I believe if you cry out to God, forgive me of my sins. I believe he would also set you free. I believe if you cry out to God, save me. Hey, 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 save me from all of my sins. I believe that God would also set you free. I believe that if you cried out, cried out, if you cried out to God, help me, help me. also set you free. Hey, 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 hey. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. Those that know what God can do. Those that are trying to hold on to God to change things. Cry out to God. Tell Him to restore you. Cry out and tell Him to empower you. 
cry out and tell him to anoint you once again. This is the time. This within our own lives. This moment that we share together, this is when within our lifespan we must examine ourselves. Don't wait on no one else. You can call out to God yourself. Remember, God knows exactly what you're going through. Hey, remember, God knows every one of your disappointments. Remember, God knows every heartache that you're taking place. Remember, 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 God knows every tear that you shed. Every tear that you shed. Hey, hey, hey. It is in those sensitive moments where we feel challenged and those sensitive moments where we're filled with the most wounded. I understand what it feels like to lose a loved one. I understand what it feels like your heart is hurting, but I also understand, hey, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians, hey, chapter 15, verse 55, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55. I had stated myself, oh death, where is that sting? Hey, 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 because I'm believing I'm going to see them on the other side. In grave, you have no victory here. We must, you, me, we must teach with authority. There is a generation in a community that just want to know, can God save me? There is a generation in a community that just wants to know, am I one of a kind? See, God is able. God is able. God is able. Able. Some are coming from homes that are not perfect. Others are friends that they thought they had until they had to stand before the judge. Others thought that those in authority had their best interest, but all of a sudden they found themselves alone. Don't you know every disappointment that you have been through? Don't you know every heartache that you have gone through? Don't you know every dream that seemed might have been broken? God was preparing you. There is somebody right now. There is somebody right now that is waiting for you. I want to challenge you. Hey, if you allow God to use you. If you allow God to use you. If you allow God to use you, if you allow God to use you, hey, hey, he can make a difference. 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 Make a difference. I want to pray for you. As physicians, pray a little bit that God is able. There is a point within our lives where we've done everything that we can possibly do. Oh, we thought we had life figured out and we thought it would not happen to me. We thought we had life figured out. We had made arrangements. We thought we had life figured out. We entered into relationships that we thought we would be for the rest of our lives. But then one day, one day, we found ourselves with tears running down our cheeks. One day, we found ourselves wondering if tomorrow would come. One day, we found ourselves, other people looking at us, judging us. We found ourselves wondering, would I ever accomplish the things that I had in my heart? But God prepared you. I understand that we're leaving a time and 
in a community that seems sometimes you don't know what is happening next and one anguish after another and churches don't look the same and people might not speak the same and have we lost that glory? Have we lost that anointing? Oh, I remember when we had caves on the back wall and you would come into the church and the spirit was so high that if they came intoxicated, soberness began to take over. But that same God is still here today. That same God is still in power. That same God is still on the throne. But can he use us? Can God allow us to be his hands? Can God allow us to be his feet? See, we judge man on the outside. But thanks be it to God, he sees our heart. Because see, we were there one day. We were at that moment when it might not seem that we look like we look today. It might not be in the stance that we are today. And God saw us. Matter of fact, he was so troubled that Jesus said, Father, I'll go send me. I'll take the beatings. Oh, I'll take the humiliations. You don't have to doubt. It was in the Garden of Gethsemane that he prayed so hard that he said, Father, let this cup, let this cup go by. But he also stated, I, not my will, not my will. Not my will. Understand, not my will. Not my will. Lord, not my will. Lord, not my will. But Lord, I lean on you. Let thy will be done. Let thy will be done. I don't know about my path, but I know who holds the path. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow. When you teach with authority, Will you tell them that are lost? Will you see them in their anguish? Would you tell them what God can do? Oh, it's nice to say, baby, God can. Oh, it's nice to say, baby, God can. But will you follow up and tell them what God can do? Would you tell them he can give you provisions when you didn't even know how provisions was going to come? Would you tell them how he has protected you? Would you tell them how he has brought you through that anguish that was in your life? Would you tell them when you thought your life was over and nobody seems to care anymore? You found yourself in a new relationship. You found yourself in a different community. You found yourself with another set of friends. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the word. We pray that the word of God goes to each and every one. They have a purpose in their lives. You have given them a condition. Lord, you told all of us to go to all nations. Let us start with our neighbor. Let us start with our homes. Let us begin to work in our churches. Lord, I pray that we bind the adversary in every church right now. As we begin to open the doors, Lord, we pray that we will open the hearts and the minds. Lord, we pray right now that as we begin to assemble back together, we're coming with peace in our hearts. We're coming with love in our hearts. We're coming together that we may be able to take on everything the devil brings our way. Lord, we're preparing because you are sending those who are broken hearted. You are sending those that are depressed. You are sending those that are in person for this moment. You are sending those that are poor in spirit. You are sending those that are confused. You are sending those that are troubled. Lord, I pray right now, begin to prepare each and every one of us Lord, you saved someone who was 10. Let them speak to the 10-year-olds. Lord, you saved those that are 15. Let them speak to the 15-year-olds. Lord, you saved those that are 19. Let them speak 
to the 19. Let them tell them what God can do. Lord, there are those that are 22 and 27 and 31. Let them speak to the 31s and the 22s. Let them know that God can do to those, Lord, that are in the 40s, the 50s. Let them know that throughout their lives, God has never left them. I understand that, Lord, some of them have left you, but Lord, you are a God of second chances. Open up. Open up. Lord, I realize you have never left, but open up their minds and hearts that they would come back to you. That they would come back to you. Lord, I know that you have always been there, but let them come back to you. Lord, I pray for those that are senior within our community. This has been a tough time. They have felt isolated. They have felt unvalued. But Lord, you said in Psalms that you will not forsake them until they teach this generation. We need them, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them. Touch their bodies right now. Touch their bodies right now. Lord, I pray for circulation in the body. I pray for active limbs in the body. Lord, I pray that they would have healing in their body. I pray that we would regulate their pressure within their body, Lord. I pray that anything that is not of you is out of their body. Lord, touch their minds. Touch their minds. Touch their minds. Lord, I pray that their minds stay sharp. I pray that their minds stay in focus. I pray that their minds stay on you. They are not forgotten. They are not forgotten. They are not forgotten. Lord, I look forward to the day when we can gather in all whole heads and give glory and honor unto you. Until that day, Lord, I pray that you would protect us. Protect each and every dwelling right now. Protect each and every temple, their bodies, Lord, right now. And let your spirit reside in them. I pray that once again, Lord, that you will pour out anointing that the devil has never seen before. You will pour out anointing that this generation, this generation will witness, this generation will speak, this generation will testify on you. Let us teach with authority, Lord. Let us teach with authority. Let us teach with authority. Lord, we always give you all the honor. Lord, we always give you all the glory. It is within you, Lord, that you have the power to change all of our lives. So, Lord, we simply say thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for what you have already begun to do. And, Lord, thank you for our future. Thank you for their future. Thank you for my future. Thank you for our family's future. Thank you for our future, Lord. And we'll give you all honor and glory. I thank God for you that we've had this time together. I pray that you will continue to hold on to God's hands. And we often say, what I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray. Would you call one another? Would you check on one another? I want you to make sure that they feel and know that they are loved. And I'm gonna continue to ask you to wash your hands. On behalf of Pastor and First Lady Rogers, thank you for joining us today. Our announcements for the week are as follows. On Tuesday and Friday, join us for the weekly prayer call at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, join us on Facebook Live at 6.30 p.m. for Bible study with Pastor Anthony Rogers. Monday, January the 25th, Lady Rogers is asking all ladies to join her for the Mary Women's Department meeting. Please check your email for Zoom login information closer to the date. Have you been missing your Unity Church family? Introducing First Sunday Fellowships. Join Pastor and Lady Rogers on Zoom starting in February from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. 
check your email for Zoom login details. To stay current on these and upcoming events, we invite you to subscribe to our Facebook page and sign up to receive our email updates. To join the Unity Coaching family, go to unitycoaching.org. That is U-N-I-T-Y-C-O-G-I-C dot org. And remember, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. May God bless you and have a great week.